Well, hopefully at this point, you've read all 12 chapters, you watched the lecture videos for all the chapters, you've done all the quizzes, you've done all the post-tests and other little assignments, and you're ready to take the final exam. Let me give you a little bit of information about the final exam. Now, as I've mentioned before, it's longer than the others. That's because our course is comprehensive. So this one has 97 questions. Exam one has 66, exam two had 80. This one has 97, and it covers material from all 12 chapters of the course. So everything we learned is on there. On the other hand, I do want you to know a couple of things. Number one, a lot of people get really anxious about formulas. There's not a huge amount of calculating. In fact, there are really only about 10 questions on the exam that require calculating. The standard deviation appears once, the variance appears once. You never have to do the pooled variance for the t-test. You don't have to do any expected frequencies for chi-squared. If you look at the formula sheet that I have linked on the syllabus, that's your clue to what you actually need to know for each of the exams, including the final exam. I also have study sheets there that list the things that are important. Now, you can use those to study. You cannot use the study sheets or the formula sheet when you actually take the exam. Like the others, this one, because of a mandatory department policy, is closed book. You can use scratch paper. You can use a calculator. You can even use your phone as a calculator, as long as you use it only as a calculator. The best way to prepare for this is to go through each of the chapters, read the book, watch the lecture videos, and then go through the quizzes. Watch each quiz review video. Do the post test. See what you miss on exams one and two. See if you can figure out what's going on there. And then I do have a two hour long review video from a live review for the final exam. You can watch that if you want. It covers the most common things. And I can tell you, hypothesis testing is high on everyone's mind. In fact, Something you need to know is that even though there are 97 questions on the final exam, they're not evenly distributed. If I recall correctly, I want to say there are about 17 questions that have to do with Chapter 8 hypothesis testing, and there's maybe 11 or 12 that have to do with Chapter 10 correlation and regression. So those ones are really important. And you're going to make, you're going to want to make sure you understand the logic of hypothesis testing, when to reject, when to retain the null hypothesis, the relationship between p-values and sample size and effect size. That's, that's all going to matter. That said, there are, again, only about 10 calculating questions on the final exam. If you're going to go completely apoplectic and get an ulcer, you can guess on them and you can still theoretically do very well on the final exam. I also want to remind you that the final exam is the one exam where the grade adjustment always comes into play. For each of the exams, I look to see if the highest uh, score anybody got is a perfect score. If it's not, especially, and I remove outliers, people who are steps away from everybody else. If the highest non outline score isn't a perfect score, I add enough points to everybody's score to make it perfect. Now, that almost never happens with exams one or two, but it always happens with the final exam. The adjustment is usually in the six to nine point range, although I actually, I decided, I made a decision last semester, it's gonna be a 10 point adjustment. You can count on that. So whatever score Canvas tells you you got on the final exam, add 10 more points to that. That will be your true score that I use, both for calculating your grade in the class and for doing grade forgiveness for the other exams. So as you prepare, make sure to go through all the other material step by step, go through each of the videos, go through the practice final. The practice final was written by the same person who wrote the regular final. This is the only thing that wasn't written by me. It was written by somebody else for the department. And I have videos that explain every question on the practice final. That can be a huge benefit to you as you prepare for the final exam. But go through each of these steps. In fact, I have a very long list. It's either 13 or 18 steps on the syllabus on how to prepare for the exam. If you go through that step by step, you can be confident that you will do well on the final exam. 
And don't forget also that as you're studying, you can contact me. If you need an immediate response, texting me or calling me is best. Canvas messages and email work, though I'm sometimes a little slow. And putting comments into Canvas messages, well, I can't respond to them directly given the way that I process those. So text me or call me and I'm happy to help you out. With that, thanks for making it all the way through the class and best of luck on the final exam.